explain quite a bit about this to me, but maybe I guess for the sake of Destin, maybe we can go through it, explain what um, the Akashic field is and exactly what you're doing. Sure. Linnea, do you want to go over that again or I can go over it or both? It doesn't matter. It's good. You can do it. Okay. <laughs> Well, the Akashic field, um, uh, Grant, is really a, um, a source field for all. And out of the Akashic field um, comes really everything. And so it's a unit of consciousness um, state. And um, we're doing Akashic healing or Akashic, often it's called Akashic healing or Akashic reading or Akashic consulting. And uh, what I do is uh, Linnea and I both connect with the Akashic guides of whomever we're working with. And that can include uh, not just people, but land, property, um, teams. So if you're, if you're, running a team or you're a teacher of a class or whatever, um, or running a business and you're a, um, responsible for a group of people or assets in some shape or form, um, or pets, for example, um, they all have what we call an Akashic guide or guides normally. And so um, we connect with these guides and they then... Uh, communicate in different ways, shapes, or forms. So sometimes um, it's through sound or voice, so you can hear them talking. Sometimes it's visually, uh, kinesthetically, or even knowing. Um, for me, it's mainly kinesthetic, knowing, and uh, visual. Uh, and so when someone comes to us with some sort of issue or concern, um, then we go into the into their records and their guides show us um, or tell us what needs to be done to, to work with that situation. So for example, um, recently I did some work on some land. Someone was selling some land. I went into the Akashic records of that land. There was um, an energetic suppression of a approximately 25% on that land for its sales price. And there was some also energetic interference um, from ley lines and uh, other issues. So I worked with the guides for that uh, property owner for the land. We cleared everything up and then I let them know what their property could sell for. And they kind of laughed and said, well, that's not going to happen. And I was $26 off. So wow. <laughs> they were thrilled with um, the much more enhanced sales price of their land. Okay. Um, do you actually, do you need an issue to get a reading? Pardon me? Do you need, do you actually need an issue to get a reading or can you just get a reading? Yeah, you can just get reading. I mean, you can ask your guides to support you in what you need best. So most people we're working with, they're working on some aspect of themselves on a physical level or an emotional level um, or spiritual level. Um, and so uh, they've got very specific issues. So maybe they want to work with abundance or they're trying to solve a, a relationship issue or there's an ongoing pattern in their life that just keeps cropping up and they just don't know why, and so we can go in there and clear it out. But occasionally, some people say, you know what, just let my guides uh, do what needs to be done. Wow. And, and how long does the reading usually take place? Uh, usually that's a 55-minute period. Um, they can be done for shorter periods, and they can be done for longer, but generally we run uh, readings for 55 minutes at a time. Okay. Um, any questions, Desta? No, I don't think so. It sounds good. I'm interested. <laughs> have you have you done something like this, Desta, as well? I mean, you've done a lot of healing. Well, the channeling, I do channeling and dowsing, and so the Akashic field is what they say is what's supposed to be tapped into um, 
with either of the things that I do as well. I don't know that it's every single time or if that's the Akashic field is just the field in general that um, dowsers and, and the channeling comes from just the field, they always say. I assume it's the Akashic field. They've specifically said it's the Akashic field sometimes, but I don't. Um, I never thought of putting a, a name to it to make sure that that's where it's coming from. Every single time, I just assume the field is the Akashic field where all the information is held and you tap into that. Like you said, for dowsing and stuff, I do dowsing and I do ley line work and with um, properties and same thing, like you said, to see if there's any blocks and to clear them and all that kind of stuff. And uh, with the dowsing, it's the same thing. You're tapping into your own higher self kind of to tap into the field to figure out what the problem is and to, and to clear the blocks. So I'm not sure if it's exactly the same thing. So I'm super interested to, um, to see the way you guys do it. Hmm. And Linnea, would you like to say something about this? No, I, I think you have said everything that needs to, needs to be said about what we do in the Akashic Record. Um, and, um, do you want to talk more specifically about some of the healing work um, that we've done? Um, we are working with their guides, but um, sometimes there are other uh, beings arriving to help us. It can mm -hmm. be beings from Pleiadians, Arturus, from Sirius, can be the blue aliens. And the other day it was a cat being from Sirius. Um, we never know. And like I told you, Brent, we also have Edgar Case on our sideline to help us. He is there. Sometimes he steps in himself and sometimes we ask him to help. <laughs> so um, we, we feel very blessed because we have so much help and yeah. it, it, it's so interesting because it's developing all the time and uh, yeah today for example we have developed a new way of um, yeah new healing process so it's like um, a healing process that is faster and uh, and also I think more, um, what can I say, powerful. <laughs> and, and so what did you change yesterday in terms of? Um, I guess I told you, Grant, that um, in our process, if, for example, we have worked with an issue, it can be self-paid, for example, and we are looking um on that issue related to past lives and um, clearing those things and then afterwards um, have a look into the cellular structure and remove the same um, sulfate um, healing and afterwards working in the subatomic particle level but today we have tried to work only in the subatomic level, particle level, and see if it actually was enough you know, um, so that we can um, work on that subatomic particle level and beyond, and then go back <laughs> the other way to see have that actually cleared what is in the cellular structure and have it actually also cleared the past life and actually it did. So, that is a new way to work and so much faster and um, yeah, very profound. So, so you're indicating that, that a lot of this has to do with past lives. Can you, you clear up most of the stuff or in terms of what the, the problems people have? Yeah, many, many things are connected with past lives. I actually see them more as worlds within worlds. They're all... Um, uh, happening kind of simultaneously. Um, but, but most people talk about these things as past lives. And um, so much is associated with that. Um, so clearing that's really important. But um, I, I think there's more yet um, to discover on, on these fronts. I think one of the 
kind of unique things that Linnea and I do is there's, there's a real um, focus on innovation and efficiency and effectiveness. And so what we start doing, you know, like what we were starting to do initially can be quite different within a couple of weeks um, uh, as the new processes or new things become present. And you never kind of know when it's going to happen. Like we, we do take some time specifically to explore things, but suddenly during a session, um, a new way of doing things just emerges because um, truly in the moment and just being present. And, and so there is an unfolding that happens as opposed to uh, creating a very like uh, um, uh, determined structure. This is how it has to be. There's an openness to what can emerge. And so if you include the multidimensionality aspect, um, you get a very rich um, experience uh, and a very, there's a lot of contribution that comes in to help, help people with whatever issues that they're, they're, they're needing to work on. I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, yeah, um, pretty much. Uh, how, do you, how do you tap in? Like, how do you start or what, what kind of method are you using to uh, uh, sort of interact with the field as opposed to the person not being able to do it? Is there something you do? Do you do meditation or how do you tap in? Yeah, there's just a, a, a little prayer that we use. Um, so we, we go through a prayer. Uh, there's a couple of prayers that we use to enter into that field. And that's that simple. My hope is that everyone in the world will be able to use this. Um, I like to call it a technology. Um, it's an inner technology, but that everyone can learn to use this for themselves. So it shouldn't be like that there's just special gatekeepers or something like that. This is something that I see that everyone can, you know, more or less everyone. There may be a few exceptions, but as a whole, most, most people should be able to learn to do for themselves. And then that's when you can get some amazing global shifts. Wow. Um, just one more, a little question again about, um, I was with Linnea and we were discussing the Edgar Casey. Can you talk a little bit more about the, the drop-ins that you get? Because the Edgar Casey was pretty interesting and the Martin Luther's wife and so maybe you can talk a little bit more about that. Do you want to speak about that, Linnea? <laughs> uh, yeah. We are very busy. So um, it's, it's hard to find time to, to do these things, but we can do it whenever we want. Um, we had the contact with Edgar, and he's actually here with us right now. We asked him to be present. Um, if we want, we can talk to him, um, but it's, yeah, we, ha I know we have time tomorrow, <clears throat> for example, but Sunday is the only day and, and it is something that we would like to explore more, like I told you, Grant, uh, about Edgar Casey and uh, the Blue Aliens and other beings. Um, and maybe write some books about that. Like you said, for example, you, you would like a book with quotes from Edgar Casey. And that is actually very possible that we could do that. Well. And so how he turns up in a healing, for example, is um, let's say we're, we're working with a certain energy and it's, uh, I experience it, a lot of it on a felt level. So it's kind of like, it, I can feel that it's, it's a bit like pushing a car or something. It's a little bit tough. So I just invite Edgar to come in and then I might see a visual of him, for example, um, uh, applying an energy to kind of a cloud or something like that. And then all of a sudden, zoom, everything, the whole energy moves much more quickly. Um, or he may give some words. Um, and sometimes he just pops in without asking per se, because I uh, usually just invite him to, to be with us for the whole session. And so suddenly he may just pop in and 
and uh, do something in that healing process, applying some sort of energy of some sort. Um, so that's how Edgar, he can be consciously brought in um, to assist on something specific, or he may just jump in himself. Um, can you, can you maybe now tell me how you, how you two got together? Like you're on the opposite sides of the earth. <laughs> yeah, we met each other in 2013. Uh, we participated in the same Palace of Peace project, uh, which is run, uh, by, uh, a woman from South Africa in, in Johannesburg. And, um, we were in, we were in different kinds of groups and Christopher and I was almost always in the same group because we have uh, the same aspects, a lot of the same aspects in our blueprint. Astrological chart. Yes. And um, then one day uh, there was a meeting, uh, but the time was changed, but Christopher did not notice. So he called on Skype and I was online. So. Um, I pushed the button and uh, then we talked and I guess that we have, yeah, we have actually talked a lot. <laughs> I, I think from, from that time, uh, yeah. very, very often. So, so that was the way we met. <laughs> and it has worked out. Um, any other questions? Desta, have you got anything? You're the healer. You should have. You should have questions. Insightful questions, yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, d did you say that Edgar Casey was here now? Yes. So, is is there anything? If he's here, is there anything? Any messages or anything that he wants anyone here to know or, or insight that we can hear? Well, let's check in, and I'll just type it out. It's usually easier that way. Yeah, here comes a little message. I'm just typing it out. Um, sometimes uh, I can speak directly, um, and then sometimes it's easier just to type out what comes forth. I can also tell you that when we work together and after we have said the prayers, we, we merge so that we work as one living, breathing energy. Um, I have a question. All right, here, let me just put this into the box for you. Uh, whoops. I'll just do a spell check. Uh, there we go. Okay. So is it like a type of channeling that you're, that you're both doing? Channeling the different beans or connecting to the Akashic records and channeling the information? Like, do you consider it a, a type of channeling? Yeah, I think there's definitely a certain aspect of it, which is, is channeling for sure. And, um, and there's different kinds of channeling that I experience, um, in my case, when, when it's being done. So it's, um, it's all in a way kind of relatively new to me. Um, I did the Barbara Brennan School of Healing program some years ago and so I think that's helpful in terms of cause like creating a base understanding um, but this is kind of different so it's not yeah I would yeah I think channeling is a good way of putting a chunk of that especially when there are words that come through um, uh, it's not a full ownership of me channel you know how some people they get kind of taken over um, 
and that doesn't normally happen. Uh, although it, I, I can feel the being with me and then it speaks through me, but it's not like it's taken over me uh, uh, as some channels experience. Yeah. Right. And so do you hear each of the words specifically or do you try and um, interpret the feelings or something uh, like the message behind the words and you're trying to, you know, um, interpret the words, like translate the words from something else or do you actually hear words and just type out the words or say the words? It can be all of those. Yeah. So s sometimes it's just, uh, it's a very, what I find that's most important is trust. So I have to trust what's going to come out of my mouth because I have no idea what's going to come out of my mouth or out of my fingers. And so it's, for me, it's a, 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 a um, exploration of trust. And then I just let that flow, whatever that is. And that's what comes out. And because of the multidimensionality, there are these other aspects like Hathor's coming in or whomever. Um, so I often have singing or sound uh, within a, a session as well. Nice. Yeah. It's very, it's a very full time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what was the class that you both took together where you met? What was the class? Was that a class that was trying to develop these skills? Linnea, do you, would you like to answer that? No, uh, it, it has nothing to do with this. Mm. Uh, the Palace of Peace is uh, an organization and uh, working with developing in many ways and working with Mother Earth specifically. Like, you know, <laughs> Palace of Peace, it's, it is just about peace to the world. So it's more a project out. working on ourselves that will manifest in the, the earth and the earth in the universe and beyond so and so there were about i don't know probably 80 or 70 or 90 people around the world doing that work uh at that time yeah. so we just met in the breakout group so to speak hmm. The one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to get um, everybody to introduce themselves before we started and the, the contact information for people who might be watching where they can make contact with you. So maybe you can introduce where you're from and your names and we can go from there. Linnea? My name is Linnea Rubina Hika and I'm from Denmark, I am 49, and I have worked with Christopher, yeah, since last summer. We started to do this work, um, working on ley lines and places and other sacred things. Um, and then we started, I think it was after Christmas, you know, like, Hi. <laughs> uh, since we have worked together since January, in this way. <laughs> okay. And I'm Christopher Barham. I live in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And um, you can contact me uh, at 819-708-5876 or um, Linnea, what's our email address? <laughs> Contact at crystalhearthealing.org? Yes, crystalhearthealing.org. Okay, we, we will link that in the, uh, the presentation. And we will uh, be very, I'm sure some people will be excited. There may be some questions that will come your way. And we will wait for Monday. I'll be very excited to see what happens Monday. And I'll be in touch with you by email for all the details on how to arrange for it. So, Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And we use this in different ways, right? So it's not just healers in terms of the traditional sense, but um, I know of uh, 
for example, a, a food um, coach, for example, who uses it. Or, you know, you can use it in any, in any way that you currently earn a living. Um, so it, it, it's very helpful. It's really helpful because you can get to the roots of things. And um, one of the things I feel that we're doing is really getting to some of the root blockages. And then as soon as you start to lift all of those out, then you can, you can progress much more quickly on that spiritual level. Um, and also really get to some sources of not just physical, but uh, emotional or mental health. Uh, we've been doing amazing work with this um, a situation with a fellow who's really struggled with traditional, or I would say modern Western mental health support. And um, he's off his medications and he is doing great things already, uh, making great strides. So I'm not sure where all the boundaries are. I, I think what's really interesting and exciting is this whole area is it's like um, new land. It's like coming to North America for the first time or something as a first nation or, you know, it's really new land and we're here to help start find out what's the science of all this. What, where are the structures, what structures exist? What can we do to be efficient, effective, um, uh, it, it really is a new land. And then how do we communicate this in a way to people who aren't necessarily so spiritually um, connected in this way um, so that it's meaningful in a language that they understand and that, that they would then want to, to utilize this in their own lives. Because I feel if, if one is really working with the unit of conscious state, this will it has to shift some of your perceptions, images, beliefs, understandings, and therefore how you not just think and feel, but also how you act and function in the world. So um, that's to me what's like really exciting. Wow. Uh, okay, I've just got one last question. Do I get to, do you de define who the guides are? Names like how many? I think because yeah, I think I talked to Linnea. I think there was more than one. Usually, is that correct? Yes, but um, it's it's uh, there is no protocol. <laughs> um, we we never know who will turn up, or or I can say what will turn up. Uh, there is really no protocol in this work so we just trust the process and um, um, and sometimes we work with specific beings or guides um, but most of the time they show up themselves um, so I think yeah. many times it is because that person is connected to these beings so so they many times they they join us and they say that uh, this person is from their family. So we have worked with um, the race builders sometimes and hatters and uh, blue Asians, guides from Sirius, from Andromeda, from the Pleiadians, from Arcturus. Uh, we even went to um, what is the name? Um, Centauri. Central Sun. Uh, yeah, also the Central Sun, but I, I, I meant Centauri. Yes. Alpha Centauri. Yeah. Perfect. We we would like to explore more more about the Central Sun. We actually I think we were there two times, but. Uh, Exploring this is more, uh, it is not when we are working with a client, it is more when we have time to, to go to these places in the universe and see what can we use from this place, uh, how can they, this help us and... Um, and each person does have some specific Akashic guides 
um, uh, kind of assigned to them, so to speak, but they don't usually give names. But maybe it, it just needs to be asked more often and maybe they'll give the name. <laughs> okay. And, and there is a kind of a ranking of, of Akashic guides because there are beings of the light and then you can, there are higher level ones as well. Um, so in time, um, you may come into in, to touch with some of these um, kind of higher level guides, if you want to call that. But um, I've never been given a name for a guide yet, uh, of, of that, of Akashic guides yet, but, uh, but I haven't been particularly asking either. So okay. I will ask. <laughs> okay. But it can also be an energy coming in. It can be a, a God energy coming in and work with us. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what happens. Yeah. yeah. So do we. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks a lot for...